Hey, y'all, how y'all doing? We're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. Okay, my book, get it online right now. The <laughs> Foundation of Life in the Kingdom. Every teaching that I'm going to teach is out of my book that I wrote back in 2005. The Foundation of Life in the Kingdom. We're going to talk about, and you get it on the website, that's uh, www restoreandunified.weebly.com. -E Get it on that site, okay? Click on it, the book tab on top. Hey, we'll get you straight on everything. Uh, the book will get to you directly through Author House, to, to my publisher. I'm the author of the book. But So what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to talk about authority. And basically, we're going to do this mandate on kingdom authority. Because the problem with ministry in churches today, and I'm not saying all of you think the same, because some of you, you have the mind of Christ, and you're thinking like God thinks, and you're not thinking out of greed like man thinks. It seems like every 20 years, a decade will come, where back in the day, it was the healing ministries through the 50s and 60s through the 70s. And people were getting money off of people being healed or people would sit in the audience and falsify a healing that had happened. In other words, they knew the person and they just picked them out of the audience to make everybody just come. So it's about a money thing. It's a money scam with the healing because the people were never sick in the first place. Or it was a situation where they would overlook the real sick people but they would go to people and say, they're sick in the name of Jesus. I see that you got cancer and be healed or whatever. But they never had cancer in the first place. It was all due for the good green money. Greed. Circus Greed. Show. Hmm? A circus show. A circus show pretty much. Okay. Now you had some true men of God like A.A. A. Allen back in the day. You had some true men of God like R.W. Schambach who actually spoke the word, stuff happened. You had stuff like my spiritual, one of my spiritual granduncles, which was Kenneth Hagin Sr., who was back in those times, and he was speaking the word and laying on the hands, and real signs and wonders and miracles were done. I'm talking about the people of old right now. We're talking about authority. So when we talk about authority, we talk about the kingdom. We're also talking about the power of God. Okay, the power of God being not only released, but demonstrated to you to show that God is say is who he says that he is. So, so you had people like Dr. Oral Roberts, who was my grandfather in the Lord, in the faith. He's dead and gone. Pastor Billy Joe Doherty, who used to visit Zambia, uh, Zimbabwe, countries like this, to establish he was a true apostle who went and established churches over there. He established hospitals. He established organizations. And he put people in root. Dr. Oral Roberts started little small Oral Roberts universities all over Africa, different countries. Understand what I'm saying. True apostles who have laid the foundation and put and trained people and put them in position. And then they went and traveled someplace else. That's a true apostle, okay? Your ministry and your anointing may be different under that mantle. Do you get what I'm saying? And what you do and where you go and how you go about things. But it will always be the same. You will always be establishing. God will always give you a root in witty inventions and ideals. And you will set the foundation and you will train people under you to get this word. And it's sound Doctrine. Understand what I'm saying. Sound doctrine. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you all come together and you speak the same things. The same thing has to come out of your mouth. See, what it is, some of us are teaching people foundation, but we don't teach it all the way and show them all the way. We just give them head knowledge. But they had no experience and walk with God. They may have walked with men, but they hadn't been out there in the field to see it for themselves, to know where they're at. So they all of a sudden, they just call themselves a prophet. 
wait a minute. Prophet to me, it's not only a person that goes around that does the exhortation, the edification, and the comfort, right? That 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 is a prophetic mantle, but it doesn't mean that you're a prophet. Am I right or wrong? That's right. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if you look at verse 4 through 5, after Paul, he was showing people the different types of tongues. He says, first of all, in verse 2, and I'm going to quote it right off the top of my head. He says, when a man, right, speaks in an unknown tongue, which could be three types of of tongues. It can be the private prayer language, it could be interpretation of tongues, or it could be which was on the day of Pentecost, the diverse kinds of tongues, where they speak many languages. So people can be edified. You only mostly see those in foreign countries. You will not see that gifting too much in the United States. Now there is a great influx of people from outside that don't speak the English language. Yes, you will start seeing the flow of the anointing in the diverse kinds of tongues. Do you get what I'm saying? Most likely, you go to Africa and China, the Middle East, you'll see those giftings. Because you have people coming in that speak different languages. The other one is the tongue that you speak when you prophesy. Either you prophesy or either you go to This is what the Lord says. You got a dime, and you interpret it. I mean, excuse me, you got a nickel. Right? And you got another nickel. This is what the Lord says. Or you speak in tongues privately, and then later on you just straight out prophesy. So prophesy is dime. When you speak in tongues, it's five cents. When you interpret what you say, same thing as prophecy, except for you spoke in tongues before the congregation burst, it's another five cents. So five and five makes what? Ten. So Understand, I'm, as I go along, I'm going to teach on the gifts. I'm going to throw little bits, hits and bits in here because the authority is going to lead up to what you have on the inside of you. Your ministry gifts and calling as well as your spiritual gifts and your calling. You have to understand this. See, you. some of you might look at like I'm crazy. Just had a little dispute, little debate with a young man. He was telling me, okay, the apostle... It's this. It comes from the Greek word apostolic. Okay, I got that. And that means an apostle. One that's sent by God. An ambassador. Got that. But my question was, he sent you, and you if you're an ambassador, what, what baby? Yeah, he sent you what to do what? To do what? So if you're an ambassador, you're going to go to where, baby? You're going to go into nations. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. going to go into countries. You're going to go to a place. You might go to prison. You might be an apostle to the prisons. Mm -hmm. You could be an apostle to the hood. You could be an apostle to, to certain countries in Africa. You could be an apostle to China. If you're an ambassador, you're going to go for a mm -hmm. season. You're not going to hit, miss, and run. You're going to go there for a season, and you're going to come with some foundation and some teaching to give them because you want to set your stamp of approval by the Holy Spirit on those people and you're going to teach the alterated word of God and your doctrine and then you're going to train up mentors, am I right or wrong, underneath you and you're going to set them in place. This is your church. God, this church, be a good pastor or, or shepherd over this flock for a season. I'm going to go elsewhere. Boom. I go somewhere else. I might establish a hospital or an organization because it's a need in that community maybe for people that are sick, that are dying. The Spirit of the Lord gave me an idea about a hospital. So I'm coming to organize, establish, set the Bibles. That's what an apostle does. He sets the law and the commandments. He sets everything in order. Do you understand? God is a God of order. And when he comes, the doctrine is going to be set and the Bible is going to be backed by the power of God and by the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? First of all, the kingdom of God, I want you to write this down, is God's agenda in heaven that he set forth for you to do in the earth. His agenda his plan, his destiny for your life that he has had a sign before the foundation of the world. And that kingdom is on the inside of you. Do you get what I'm saying? 
That kingdom mandate is on the inside of you. Before you was even a seed in your mama's womb, God foreknew you. He told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6, he says, I called you to be a prophet from all nations. He said, well, I, can't, I don't even know how to speak, Lord. I mean, he said, don't say you don't know how to speak. I'm going to put my words in your mouth and you're going to prophesy against Judah. Didn't he tell him that? And against Israel. What did it say? Go ahead and read, baby. Go ahead and read before we go to Luke. I'm going to set a standard when I talk about this authority because you need to understand godly authority, kingdom authority. You're in rule. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation under God. You are God's spiritual house. You are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And when you come down and when you speak words, you're going to speak words of authority. You mean business. Devil, get out. That's what I'm talking about. Read, baby. What does it say? Uh, right Jeremiah there? 1, 4. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying. Check this. Before I formed you in the womb. Before I, foreknew, I, before I knew you. Before I formed you in the womb. Before your mama even knew you. Before your mama even knew you. Before anybody even knew you. Check it out. I knew, I knew you and approved you as my chosen instrument. God already knew you before I knew you. Mm -hmm. He chose you as his instrument. He not already saying this to Jeremiah. He's speaking that to you. That's right. So it is the back in the day, it's the same thing now. Ain't nothing new under the sun. God is the same God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You were chosen. You might have not been chosen to the prophetic ministry, but you could have been chosen to the ministry of helps. You could be like me and what that me and brother Sean was talking about. And we had a little debate about it, about the apostolic anointing. But you need to understand fully what they do in authority. Do you get what I'm saying? What else does it say, Mama? And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. I consecrated you. In other words, God knew you was going to come to him, and you was going to be humble, and you was going to be consecrated. He already foreknew you before the foundation of the world. So what you had but yesterday? You had that big blood in your mouth. So what you had a 40 drinking it down? You were getting drunk. So what you had prostitutes and you were whoring around and doing what you did? God had a mandate set for your life and that time is now. You repented. You gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You changed your life. Now you're at ground level. Now you're ready to grow in the things of God. And now I'm about to teach you about your godly authority in Jesus Christ. Not in Alan Johnson. Not in Lisa Johnson. In Jesus Christ. You must understand the mandate. You were called, no matter what you did in your past life, get that guilt trip out the way, for there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that are called. What? According to his purpose. According to his purpose. You were called. You were chosen. And he chose you. And he told you to go forth and bear forth much fruit. That means dying to this flesh. And that your love, your joy, your peace, your meekness, your gentleness, your kindness, your faith, your self-control will maintain. It will stay the same. You have to fight the good fight of faith to maintain. Sometimes the enemy will come in like a flood, but the Lord will mm, lift up a standard against them. And how do you lift up the standard? Through the word of God. call came through trying to take me out, but I'm going to go ahead and make this short. I do apologize, y'all. What, what does the word say? Go ahead, baby. Go ahead and teach. Okay. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I have appointed you a prophet to where? The nations. So Jeremiah was called to prophet to the nations, but not everybody's going to be called to the nations. Now, everybody's going to be called to the nations. Some people are called, like I said, to prisons. Some people are called to their communities. Some people are called different places. So what you got to understand is when you're standing in authority, you need to ask God, number one, what is my call? What was I called to do? And you get your mandate God will give you Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Read it, baby. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. 
You need to ask God, what was I called to do? Declaring the end and the result from the beginning. Uh -huh. And from the ancient times, the things which not have not yet been done, saying, my purpose will be established, and I will do all that pleases me and fulfills my purpose. See, God has called you to a holy purpose. And he's going to show you what you were called to first. But then don't just jump right into the call. You got to get up under people that are that are experienced in that call. And you have to sit and be trained under them. I always say this. Isaiah chapter, I mean Galatians chapter 4, verse 2. I always say that scripture all the time. You have to be under tutors and governors until the appointed time. So when you get ready to stand in your authority, you know who you are, but you ain't got to go around telling everybody who you are. See, a true prophet, a true apostle, a true teacher, a true pastor, it's not always going to go around telling you who they are. By your title. They're not going to go by title. You're going to tell by the anointing that's in their life who they are. They're not going to be running around broadcasting with the mouth telling everybody their business. Jesus, see, see, there was a situation in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus was on a 40-day fast. So I'm going to show you something in Luke chapter 4. Look at verse 5 and 6. I want to show you this. Listen to this. Then he led Jesus up to a high mountain and displayed before him all the kingdoms of the inhabited all right, earth. All right, listen, listen, see, see, Satan's taking him to the mountain, showing him everything, all the glorious lands of the world and everything. Now, check this, check this. And their magnificence in the twinkling of an eye. All the money, all the glitz, all the glam. Satan had to be out of his cotton-picking mind. He, 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 he didn't know who he was dealing with. I don't... I don't think, I'm trying to get my baby's picture face in here. I don't think Satan knew who he was dealing with. I think Jesus was just cool, collected. He didn't nobody know who he was. And, 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 and listen, listen how Satan approached the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who was in flesh. And Satan didn't even recognize him. Check this. Satan said, and the devil said to him, I will give you all this realm and its glory, hmm? its power and its renown, hmm? because it has been handed over to me, oh. and I give it to whomever I wish. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Satan had to be stupid. <laughs> Did he know who he was talking to? Did, you talking to the Lord Jesus, the Christ, who's sitting at the right hand of the God, making intercession. He's the king over king and the Lord over Lord. Did you know, Satan, who you were talking to? You got to be out of your cotton-picking mind to tell the God who created all that that you're going to give this to him? And he's already over all that. He made all that stuff. Bruce, he made all that stuff. Philip, what? how can he go to Jesus, God, incarnated in the flesh, and tell him, I'm going to give you back all the kingdom because it's mine. What kind of foolishness is that? <laughs> Satan had to, what the Spanish people call loco. You're loco, man. You're loco. You're crazy. But Jesus had something for him. Go ahead and read on, baby. He said, uh, Satan continued to say, Therefore, if you worship before me, it will <laughs> all be yours. It will all be yours? Wait, wait a minute, man. How can it be his when he created it and made it at the beginning, right? And he gave it to Adam, man, right? And man got tricked. And Satan, what is Satan's title? He's a thief. He stole the kingdom. Away from man. So he had control over it up until this time now. So now God's going to trick Satan. He came into a man. <laughs> Satan didn't even know who he was, man. Satan didn't even know who he was tempted on the 40-day fast. Hey, this is the revelation I got out of it. Check this. And then he talking about, I'm going to give you all the glory. Wait a minute. Don't the earth and everything above and everything down here on earth belongs to God? 
Didn't he said he given you everything pertaining to life and godliness here on this earth? Yes. Didn't he give you authority and power over Satan to reign and rule? Yes. So what is he sitting there thinking he going to tempt the Lord thy God in the flesh and tell him he's going to give all this and all this glory if you bow to me? Now, now, little did Satan know Jesus was going to die. With God in him, in the earth, right? And then he was going to be what? Resurrected. He was going to be taken up with power and what? Authority. And with godly power and authority, according to Ephesians chapter 4, turn there, baby, look at verse uh, 6. Check this out. I'll take you step by step. I'm showing you how the authority started and how it went from Jesus on end to what? And it was given to us. Check this. One God and Father of us all, uh -huh. who is sovereign mm -hmm. over all and uh -huh. working through all uh -huh. and living in all. And living in all. Yet grace, God's, which is God's undeserved favor, mm -hmm. was given to each one of us, mm -hmm. not indiscriminately, mm -hmm. but in different ways, mm -hmm. in proportion to the measure of Christ's rich and abundant gift. All right. Keep going. There, verse 8, therefore it says, when he ascended on high. Wait, 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 wait. So <clears throat> he given us all these things, right? That my wife just read. He given us all this power and authority and this grace, right? Now, he's going to talk about when Jesus died and before he was resurrected. This is what Paul is going to give you a revelation of what happened. See, Satan's a fool. <laughs> Read this, baby. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. He, said, he led what? Captivity captive. Uh-huh. And he bestowed gifts on men. And he gave the gifts of the Holy Ghost to men. So, he first descended in the earth, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Is that what he said? He ascended on high. Mm -hmm. He led captivity captive. He bestowed gifts on men. Mm -hmm. Now this expression, he ascended, mm -hmm. what does it mean except that he had also previously descended? He went descended. From the heights of heaven into the lower parts of the earth. He went to the lower parts of the earth. To do what? To take the authority back, the keys of hell and death, away from Satan. To give us back our dominion. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Hold on. Hold your horses, baby. Hold your horses. I ain't through with you yet. This is what you have. This is what the church ain't teaching you. But they call me a false prophet. I'm going right to scripture. They just don't know it's in the scripture. It's been right there for ages. And what was that scripture where he said? He said he triumphed over Satan. Where is that right there? Down here somewhere. Where is that one he said he tried to for Satan? Where, where, where is it? I know it's down here. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Go, go to the King James, because I can't see it. Okay. Okay. He made a show of them over me. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Now, we start. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Starting with verse 13. Check this out. And you being dead in your sin. And you being dead to sin. Okay. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. That means your heart's been changed. Go ahead. Hath he quickened together with him. He's quickened you together with him by his Holy Spirit. Now you're together with Christ. Read. Having forgiven <coughs> you all trespasses. He's forgiven you all of your trespasses. Understand that. No condemnation. That those that are in Christ Jesus. Read. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Blotting out the handwriting. All us. that other religious crap got to go. Read. Which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, mm -hmm. nailing it to his cross. So he took all that foolishness from the Old Testament out of the way and he nailed it to the cross plus your sins. Now check this. And having spoiled principalities wait, wait, and Wait, he powers, did what, baby? He did what? He spoiled principalities and powers. Remember Ephesians when he went into the earth? This is what he did. 
He did what, baby? He spoiled principalities and he powers. He spoiled and went down and slapped Satan upside his head. That's what he did. Read. And he made a show of them openly. And he open. made a show of them between heaven and hell. Jesus put on a clinic. He did a Mike Tyson number on them. Muhammad Ali Robodoke number on them jokers. Go ahead and read, baby. Triumphing over them in it. He triumphed over them in it. He took the keys. Right? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Hold on just a second. I ain't through yet. You just don't know. Chapter 15. Look at look at up and around verse 40 something. Let's go up to verse 47. Let's see what it says. First man is the earth. Mm -hmm. Back here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, look at verse 55. Chapter 15, verse 55, 1 Corinthians. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Death, where is your sting? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought we were going to die. Death, where is your sting? Jesus asked, Paul, well, death, where is your sting? You, you can't harm me. I'm standing in authority. Read. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Where is your victory? I, I'm going to the grave. I got power over the grave. Read. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of the sin is the law. And the strength of sin is the law, but. But thanks be to God, which has given us victory through our Lord Jesus thanks Christ. Thanks be to God, who's given us what? Victory. Victory. To who? Through Lord Jesus Christ. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Over death. Over hell. Over all obstacles that's holding you back. You have the authority. Hold on just a second. Let's go back to Luke chapter chapter 4. And let's re finish reading what happened. After, after Jesus was tempted by the devil. I'm going to show you something. Okay. He said, it is written, mm -hmm. Thou, the man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up to a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee and the glory of them. He had to be a fool. Go for ahead. that it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. Mm -hmm. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Check out Jesus' answer. He said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee for behind it is me. written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall thou serve. You want to know what it is? You want to you know what it want to know how Jesus responded? The world and money and stuff is not important to me. What's important to me is that my people worship me. My mm. people get to believe and know me and understand who I am first and worship. All those other things are going to come with the kingdom automatically. You ain't got to sit there and breathe and get hungry after stuff. And be and oh Lord, please bless me. No, all you got to do is live righteously. All you got to do is do what God tells you and be obedient. You got to kind of get to know God in a relationship. See, when you're a man and woman of the authority, you're going to be disciplined, just like Jesus was on his 40 day fast. Okay, I remember there was a thing in there when the disciples were going out trying to heal the sick. And they went to lay hands on this boy. He, they, nobody could heal that boy. They brought the whole boy. To, they brought the boy to Jesus. Jesus, your disciples couldn't do nothing with this man. Jesus said, bring the little boy to me. Oh, ye of little faith. And he cast the demon out of the boy. Fell down, did everything, hooped and hollered, but the demon came out. Apostles, the apostles, the the soon apostles who were disciples during that time, they were being trained to be an apostle. That's why I said, some of you haven't arrived yet. You got to sit up under, to, see, these, these disciples sat up under Jesus. They were later apostles, but they were still being trained. You understand that, okay? Stop putting yourself up there as an apostle and you're still up under tutelage. You're not yet, yeah, you're not full-fledged. You're not, you're not going to be capable of handling that job. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, I'm telling you. I know I've been around true apostles. But but, but this, check out, the disciples came to Jesus and they said, why couldn't we cast that demon out? And Jesus says, these things only come by what? Prayer and fasting. 
fasting. And fasting. So sometimes, in when you're a man or woman of authority, there's going to be some days that you're going to go to God in secret. Ain't nobody going to know your business. Because you ain't got to go around telling everybody you fasting. Like it said in scripture, you go to your father in secret. Shh. And all of a sudden, what you do in the dark, it's going to be revealed to the light. It's going to be rewarded openly. That's the plan of the kingdom. That's what a kingdom man does. That's what a kingdom woman does. You go to, see, you ain't got to sit there and, and try to publicize who you are and tell everybody who you are. God's going to show up who you are. You're going to be quiet until God shows up. When God shows up, everybody's going to shut up. I want you, me and Lisa went to a church one time. Ain't nobody knew me from a hell of beans. Okay? I just sat there quiet, went to a couple of services. All of a sudden, the third time we went, the Spirit of the Lord hit me. And I spoke to the man of God. I spoke to the leader. I have a word for you. And it was directly from God. And it spoke directly to his and his wife's heart. And everybody in the audience was like, where did this man come from? But I ain't trying to advertise. I'm just doing what God tells me to do. And when he tells me to do it. Plus, I had respect. I said, man of God, I have a word. Do I have your permission? Don't go up in people's church and just start and prophesy. If God gave you a word, go to them in respect. Sir, may I? And then they'll let you. Then you say with us, say with the Lord. And don't overdo it. Don't try to show off. Just be yourself. Speak under godly authority and leave it alone. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some of you just to the extreme. And then after you don't said it one time, you don't got the big head, all of a sudden you're a prophet. I've never claimed that I was a prophet. I said I have a prophetic anointing. But I am not a full-fledged prophet as of yet. I'm still in training. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm a full-fledged teacher. And still, I'm still te being teachable by other men of God. I talk to brothers in Africa. I talk to my brother Omar in New York. I talk to my brother Kevin Ewing down in the Bahamas. Who got some, some they learned some things more than me. And they even listening on my teachings. Because there's still some things that they may have missed. Ain't nobody better than nobody up in here. We all got to give things. But we share and share light. It's not about being have come with that crazy competitive spirit that you always try to come with. And everybody, I'm a person of authority. You're a person of authority, so what? When you stand in your authority, you stand in your authority. God is just using you as a vessel. All you are is a servant. You're a friend of Christ, but really, you're a servant. You ain't no wall up here. Queen Sheba and King Solomon and all that. No, no, no. You, you haven't arrived yet. You should always be teachable. You should always leave. A person might come to you and speak a word directly from God. You might miss it because you're looking at that person in his condition. Oh, he not all that. He, what can he tell me? Oh, a drunk on the street told me something one day. And I listened and took heed and it benefited me. Don't always be so gun ho and so heavenly minded where you know earthly good, saints. Mm. Understand that God can, if God can speak to a donkey, he can speak to a drunk or a drug addict too. Mm -hmm. Always be humble. Never underestimate your opponent. Never. Don't always look. Well, they don't know. Because a lot of times it will come out of their mouth. Then you can tell exactly who they are. You understand what I'm saying? But if they ain't backing the word of God, they ain't hitting on deadly. If you ain't got the word of God to back up what you're saying, when you stand in the authority, and the reason why I'm going here, because I'm giving you a prerequisite, of what it means to walk in authority. You got to know this word. You got to study this word. Now check, check it out. What else happened with Satan and Jesus, baby? Go on, read. Okay. Uh, Jesus said, mm -hmm. Get thee behind me, Satan, mm -hmm. for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Only him shall thou serve. And right. so he didn't give up. Satan didn't give up. He brought him to Jerusalem okay. and set him uh -huh. on a pinnacle uh -huh. in the temple uh -huh. and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, 
Cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. See, Satan even knows the scripture. <clears throat> that scripture that he quoted, I believe, is in Psalm 68. He even knew the scripture. And he came back, just like some of y'all know the scripture. But you think he can outwit and slick. Put some slick words in there, or either chocolate covered coated. No, that's not what the word says, buddy. You're in error. See, right then, Satan quoted the word, but he was in error. Hmm. It was an error. Read. What does it say, baby? And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot listen, against listen. the stone. Jesus answering said unto him, uh -huh. It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy tempt God. The Lord thy God. You want to know why he said that? Because in that situation when he was talking to Psalms, he said, mm -hmm. If it were an accident and he was to slip and fall, the angels would have charge. This time he's trying to make the God of all mankind, purposely, all of a sudden, jump off the mountain and the angel's going to take charge. That's not the way it works. If you accidentally do it, do you get what I'm saying? You see how people twist the word of God? They twist the word of God. You got to be careful. You got to study to show yourself approved on the God, a workman that can rightly divide the word of truth. You got to know this word. You got to live this word. You got to walk this word. I know one time we was in a service and they were talking about, and I'm not going to say no names, and they were talking about the spirits that were on people and generational curses that were on the people's family. Now, you all know that Galatians 3.13 says we, are, we, have not, we have been redeemed by the curse of the law, right? That the blessings of Abraham might be on us, okay? But see, they took it to the extreme and said the curse is still there, which is probably still there because it depends on their behavior and how they do people in life, whether the curse stays or whether the curse goes away. And you have to recognize the curse and speak it and command it to go. So he was speaking it and commanded the curse to go. But at the same time, he set up a line where it says in the Bible, you must give in order for that curse to be broken. But it was nowhere in scripture. You see, you see how Satan twists the word? Mm -hmm. Even through man, he'll twist the word. He quoted the scripture and went over it and I caught him. And I said, I'm not giving it to, oh, to a man to pray with my children. No, no. I'll give him some money because he was teaching right at the beginning to bless him. Yes, but I'm not over my children. Could you? you could be putting a spirit on my kids. Mm. You could be speaking a curse on my kids. No, nah. no, nah, I'm not going to. Nah. I ain't no fool because I know what the scriptures say concerning that. I'm very smart when it comes to that. So I kind of backed off. I kind of played it nonchalant because I didn't want to mess up the service. But the, my indignation in me wanted to stop the service and correct him. But I was out of order if I would have did that. So I just kept my mouth shut, gave to the man of God, stepped back, kind of walked away. I loved what he taught. It was right on time. But when you came to the time of giving money to pray over my children, no, nah, mm -hmm. uh -uh. we're going to give you money based on what you taught us, because what you taught us, we can take it back and we can apply it to our lives. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A servant is worthy of his hire, yes. But don't, no, I'm not gonna give you no money and, and pray, no, 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 that's, that, that's, that's, to me, that might be a little bit of witchcraft or something going on up in there. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not knocking the man of God. That was his approach, but if people were so, you know, gullible, but they didn't read the word of God like I did and didn't study, they would be fooled by the man of God. Then their life would be miserable. Might be a curse there. I don't know. But I didn't do it. I didn't participate in it. Neither did my wife. Do you get what I'm saying? But the devil will twist it. Do you get what I'm saying? He'll twist the word. Read, baby. What else does it say? Check okay. this. Jesus answering said, If thou shalt not, the Lord, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, when the devil had ended all the temptation, mm -hmm. he departed from him mm -hmm. for a season. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 14. Jesus, now check this. Now check this. Jesus so, so Satan departed for a season. 
Jesus won the ultimate victory over Satan's temptations in that situation. When you fast and pray, look to get the victory. Okay? Look to pray at the end of the, that fast. And thank God that you made it through that fast. And now, all of a sudden, Jesus is a changed individual after that 40 day fast. He is a totally different person than what he was before he saw God. And before he was seeking first the what? The kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Now check out what happens in this next verse. Check this out. Jesus returned in the power and of the spirit. He returned how? He returned how? In the power and of the spirit. He returned how, baby? In the power and of the spirit. In the power and of the spirit. In the power. And another word for power in the Greek means authority. So he returned in authority. In what? Of the spirit. Of the spirit. The authority of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. Listen to what I'm saying. You need that time for fasting. You need that time to see God. I'm educating you. I'm giving you, I'm giving you prerequisites that's going to get you there. When you stand in your authority, when you stand in kingdom, there's going to be times you're going to have to be praying and fasting and praying in tongues and speaking loud. And, and you're going to have to come against that opposition like Jesus did. Satan, that slew foot is going to be waiting on the side, waiting to trip you up in the middle of your fast or near the end of it. He's good because he knows that you're weak near the end of the fast. He knows you're ready to jump on that steak. He know that you ready to jump, jump on that, jump on that lasagna. Hmm? Get some of that Chinese food, hmm? Mexican food. You stink. You smelling that aroma. You like Dino on the Flintstones. You got to have it. That pizza, that New York pizzeria, ain't that right, Philip? That New York, that White Castles, hamburgers. You can smell it. Like, 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 like. Uh, what's what, what's that? What's that, what's, that, what's that, uh, the two females? Salt and pepper. For the smell of it. <laughs> but check out what happened. He walked in Jerusalem with power and authority in his spirit. There went out of a fame of him through all the region around about. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. Mm -hmm. And when he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up as his custom was, mm -hmm. he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Oh, wait, hold, wait, hold on a second. Now, when he came back with the power, he went back and touched people in the community. He healed the sick. Okay? He went all through where? All through where? Uh, Nazareth. Nazareth. Where he'd been brought up. Where he was brought up and he was healing the sick. And then that was delivered unto him, right? Mm -hmm. After this, he, 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 he opened up the book of Isaiah and and every time, I want you to understand this, when you're standing in kingdom authority, you must know the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. This scripture that he's going to in Isaiah is in Isaiah 61. Okay? So he's going to quote from the kingdom of God from the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament. Now, mind you, there was no New Testament as of yet written. All they knew was the law of Moses and the prophets. Understand what I'm saying now. So Jesus is going back to the Old Testament, which was the only testament, because the New Testament hadn't been developed yet. King James wasn't even alive yet. So wipe King James out of the equation and put yourself with Jesus as at this time, he only quoted because the Bible says that Jesus came to fulfill what? The law. The law and the prophets, right? Mm -hmm. So every time Jesus quoted scripture, he went to Psalms, the Psalms of David. He went to the book of Ecclesiastes. He went to the Isaiah. book of Proverbs. He went a lot to Isaiah. He just tore Isaiah up. He went to Jeremiah, he went to Ezekiel, he went to Daniel, he went to all of these, he even went back to Genesis and Exodus and was teaching the scribes. The man had all this wisdom because he was God in the flesh, but Satan didn't even recognize who he was dealing with. So he walks into the synagogue after he done healed the sick 
after he done raised the dead, after that fast, he went out and started operating automatically, started demonstrating his ministry. Do you get what I'm saying? Then he went into the synagogue. Check this out. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me. It's upon me. Go ahead. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Because he to the poor. has anointed me to do what? Preach the gospel to the poor. First of all, you're going to have to reach the people that are poor. Stop looking for people that got money all the time. Don't believe what the church say about that. Because they're going to try to outwit you. And try to say, oh, you need to just do. That's later on down the line. Mm. But you got to build your congregation. If you want a church, if you, if you want a ministry, you got to build your people. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, for he has anointed you to do what? Teach the gospel to who? The poor. First the poor, the homeless. Mm -hmm. Restore. What's, what's the name of my ministry? Restore and unify. God's ministry through me and Lisa is restore and unify. We come to restore you. We come to teach the word to restore you and bring you back together again so you can come back together again in unity. Do you get what I'm saying? That's what the ministry is all about. That's what we were called to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. He put his Spirit upon me, his characteristic of his Spirit, and he told me to go and minister to the poor. What else did he do, baby? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Heal the brokenhearted. People that have gone through the force, hurt, beat, beat up, beaten down, abuse. To preach deliverance to the captives. To preach deliverance to these crazy people. Preach deliverance to the captives so hopefully in their minds they'll be set free and they'll have the mind of Christ. This is what we were sent to do. Read. And in the sight of the to, and recover wait, and recovering of the sight of the blind. You can't see. Lay your hands on your eyes. You can see now. Or it could be twofold. You may not know what the word is saying, but after you don't heard. Minister Johnson's teaching after the word, your eyes are starting to open and you're starting to understand what God is really all about. That's what the word of God is talking about. That's what it means to be a person up under authority. Do you get what I'm saying? Read. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are bruised. You trodden down, beat down, bruised. You sit there to heal the bruise. Go ahead, read. To preach the acceptable year of the to Lord. To preach the acceptable. Didn't we have a message on this before? Mm -hmm. Called the acceptable year of the Lord? Go back and look at part one and part two and study those messages on the year of the Lord. Go on my page and type it in, the year of the Lord. Listen to those messages. It tells you a lot. We're talking about kingdom authority right now. So you're going to walk in this authority that Jesus walked in. Because he said in John 14, 12, 14 and 12, that greater works. Now, I'm going to pass the baton onto you. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Now, I'm going to pass the baton onto you. And I want you to go forth. And I want you to do the works that I did in the earth. Do you get what I'm saying? What does it say there, baby? This morning. And he closed the book. And he closed. He dropped the mic. He just, boom. Drop the book. Yeah, see? I just dropped the mic. In today's vernacular. He just dropped the mic. That is a sermon in itself. You have this anointing. You have this power and authority. Now, turn to Matthew 18. I mean, excuse me, Matthew 28. 28. Matthew chapter 28. And I'm going to end it on this, these two notes. I got two, just, uh, let's see. Two more scriptures ago. Matthew 28, 18. Let's go ahead and read that. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, listen All power. Listen, listen, listen. All what? All power. All power. Is given unto me in all heaven authority. and in earth. All authority mm -hmm. is given to me where? In heaven and in earth. In heaven. Because what did he do? In Ephesians chapter 4 and Colossians chapter 2. He went to hell. He set captivity captive. He gave us the gifts. And then he went down to earth and he united, made an open show of Satan. Remember we read it in Colossians chapter 2? He slapped Satan upside the head and he took the keys of death and hell, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, 
all of a sudden he stands in the power and authority in Matthew 28. And he says, what? Say it again, baby. All power is given unto you. All me. power. I got the keys, baby. In heaven and in an earth. In heaven and in earth now. Go ahead. Go ye therefore and teach. Now, I'm going to give you that authority. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and do what? Teach all nations. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. What? Of the Son. Of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Teaching them to observe all things. Teaching to them to observe all things. Go ahead, read. Whatsoever I have commanded you. Whatever Jesus have commanded you through the Spirit of God. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. I am still with you, even though I've gone to the Father to pray for you, and I sent forth the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which shall not only be on you, he's going to be in you. Do you get what I'm saying? All power has been given, and he wanted you to go forth to, the, to people and the nations and all over and teach the Word of God. What am I doing right now? What am I doing you're right teaching, now? teaching, you're teaching. I'm teaching the word of God. Yeah, yeah. And it says to baptize. And he's not only talking about water baptism either. We're going to talk about that later. That's another subject. But that's also part of kingdom authority. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I want you to underline that because I'm going to come back with part two of this lesson later on. When I start to teaching about the baptism. Because when you walk in godly authority, you must understand what baptism is about. It's not just immersing in water and just in the Catholic Church or the Methodist Church, just sprinkling somebody. It's, a, it's, it's more than that. It's a whole lot more than that that you have to learn. Now, turn to Luke chapter 10, verse 19. This is just to confer what Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Check this out. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents Beho and scorpions. Behold, I give you what? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Power? Where did that word come from? That word power means authority in some translations. Mm -hmm. I've given you authority and power to tread over who? Serpents and scorpions. To tread over spirits. Those are evil Demonic, he's showing you symbols of evil and demonic spirits, serpents and scorpions. Over what? Over all the power. Over all the power. Of the enemy. Of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means and hurt you. And nothing by any means should do what? Hurt you. Nothing should hurt you. You have to recognize your authority. You have to know what it is. How do I move in that authority? Look at Mark 16. Look at Mark 16, 15. I'm going to continue to teach this. Says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. There it goes preacher. again. There it goes again. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Teach the gospel. Again, Jesus, Jesus is to, continues to tell you. He, it's, a, it's a command. Hmm. It's a command. You got to find out. What you, remember I told you at the beginning of the message? You have to ask God what your calling is. And then he's going to show you the Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. He's going to show you the end of your call at the beginning. And then you need to be up under someone once you find out what the call is to help you in that call. Didn't I tell you guys I'm going back to school? Mm -hmm. Didn't I tell you this morning that I went to Bible college years ago? But there might have been things I forgot. And not only that, sometimes you get a little, uh, well, you got you need more and more of God. And a lot of times, you have to reteach yourself. You have to go back to the elementary things of God. Sometimes you have to sit up under, even though you know what you know. You know who you are, tutors, and be humble. Do what they say to the appointed time until God can release you into your call. Do you get what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to leave right. Churches, I've left, I've left right. You understand? There's a few churches that didn't teach the word right. And we left badly, some, but not a lot. I left most of the churches on good ground, good note. We're still friends today. Do you get what I'm saying? Most of my forefathers are dead. They're gone. Their sons took over the ministry. 
but I still fellowship. I still correspond with them. My spiritual mother is still alive today at the age of 88. We still talk once a week. Do you understand what I'm saying? You always have to keep the relationship. If you're a person that under, under authority, understand with your leaders. You always keep a good, close relationship. Because you never know when you might need them. It's good to be under a covering, under a mantle. Do you understand what I'm saying? And a covering to an extent. I don't mean a covering somebody telling you what to do all the time. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about mentorship. Not covering. Well, you better do if I tell you to do this. No, no, no. Yeah, you do what they say and they're training you. But it's mentorship. That's the word. Not covering. Mentorship. Say it. Mentorship. Governors. Tutorists. Until God's appointed time. Understand that. You may have the authority. You might have the power. But my big brother Larry's right down the block down there. I can't go beyond what I am. Because I'm still kind of under tutorists and governors. Do you, you get what I'm saying? He understands the anointing on my life. But I still have to remain under tutors and governors until I'm released of the Father. Then I can get into deeper revelations and expound on those deeper revelations and give you those truths. Right now, I can get those truths, but I keep it within. I'm only revealing truths that's foundational teaching. Because when you with sound doctrine and foundational teaching, you stay safe from the devil. You know when the devil's coming like Jesus, when he told him to throw himself off the mountain. You know that's not of God. You already know. Like I knew that man of God. When he put money with cast casting the demon out of the people's children. Oh no, 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 no. That, that's not scriptural. I knew because I'm founded on a foundation that cannot be moved. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. And Paul laid that foundation after Christ. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I took upon the foundation and I started building. And the scripture says, be careful how you build. Be careful that you don't get in error. Be careful how you you build. Be careful you don't jump ahead of God. Be careful you ain't trying to be seen too quick. Be careful you don't make mistakes. You don't keep making mistakes and being hard-headed. And when somebody comes to give you knowledge, you're rejecting it. Be careful that you don't reject the knowledge that they're giving you. Because it's going to come a time and a season where God is going to use you. But you need to understand where you're at. Some people call themselves an apostle. I call them a full-fledged evangelist because you haven't established anything. You just went from one place to another. You didn't establish nothing. You got to get with that pastor in the core of the problem, and you got to establish things. Now, see, for example, the brother that I met, a church I prophesied the other day. I stepped in there in the office, but not the office of a prophet, but I had a prophetic gift to present to the body of Christ. And I ministered to him. He knows I wrote books. He knows I teach the word. What if he was to approach me one day? Check this. Mm. What if he was to approach me one day? Brother, can you come here to our church and bring my congregation some foundational teachings on some days? Do you get what I'm saying? And I lay a groundwork. And they stop following the teachings that God has given me to give. But notice, I didn't go to the pastor and ask him. He came to me. Okay? So I'm laying the groundwork for that ministry. Now, once I walk away from that ministry and my work is complete and they have somewhat of a foundation, I go to the next ministry or establish a church within myself and then take mentor somebody and put somebody in place. Okay? And I'm teaching. 
And I laid the groundwork. I talked about sanctification. I talked about redemption. I talked about the gifts of the Spirit. I talked about sanctification. I talked about all the groundwork the person would need. I took them through all 66 books of the Bible and all of my teachings. It's like I'm teaching on authority right now. All of a sudden, there was a man of God that took interest of the ministry. So I took him under my wing and I groomed him. And he's ready to teach. Brother, okay. You've been up under me for two years. Am I right or wrong, baby? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is your church. And I step away. So all of a sudden, I have two churches that I have laid the groundwork under. Because God sent me. Do you see what I'm saying? See, when God sent you, your spirit's going to bear witness. It's going to be in connection with that person's spirit. And they're going to ask you to come. You ain't got to ask them. You ain't got to force your way through the door. And, and then God will set you also to set your own groundwork. Then you get your own 510C. What's it? 503C. 1C. License. To nonprofit. For nonprofit organizations. And you set the groundwork. That makes you an apostle. An evangelist will just travel. Go to me. He might teach. But most of the time, they just preach and stir the crowd up, and they move in the gifts of the Spirit. An apostle stays for a while and teaches and moves in the gifts of the Spirit. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you got to understand the difference between spiritual gifts and ministry gifts. you got to understand the difference in certain people's authority. Now, you have different types of apostles. You have apostles that may go to the prisons. you got apostles that may go to the hood. you got apostles that may go to the nations, certain nations. Certain countries. You got apostles that are up under the president. And they speak in by the every day. Prophets as well. Because an apostle and a prophet move in the same anointing. Except for with a prophet, they don't sit to establish churches. Now, once God moves on them to establish churches, normally they establish a prophetic move under God. And they train people that are operating under the prophetic anointing to come to the fullness of their calling as prophets. Like I, like Elijah, he had a school. The children uh, in Acts chapter 13, he said there were prophets and teachers, and there were six of them. But they picked out two that was Barnabas and Paul for the apostleship. So there were people under the ministry, under their tutelage, Lucius and the rest of them, they were teaching, and they were used in the prophetic ministry. Philip's four daughters were all prophetesses. Philip moved in the realm of an evangelist. He laid hands on the sick. They showed, that's what R.W. Schambach and A.A. Allen's ministry was all about. And they went to establish. Now, A.A. Allen had a couple of men that followed him. R.W. Schambach was one of them. Am I right or wrong, mm -hmm, baby? Mm -hmm. Now, after he passed the mantle on to A.A. A. A. Allen, passed the mantle on to R.W. Shambach, what did that make A.A. A. Allen? An apostle evangelist. Because he has men of God that are doing the same work under him. But they're moving in the, what? Evangelistic anointing. See, there's so much you have to learn. And you got to understand the move of God and how he moves. Do you get what I'm saying? According to scripture. Everything that I can explain, I can show you in scripture. And we're going to go through this when we talk about authority. Because I'm going to be putting some stuff in here about the ministry gifts that you need to learn. Because some of you old timers that think you know. And I, I don't know everything. But I know who I was up under. And I seen it with my own eyes, man. Yes, right. I seen it with my own eyes. And I experienced it. So I'm not just talking to be talking. I have to walk this thing a little bit in order to understand what I'm saying. I'm not talking and trying to preach um, false doctrine when I can back it by the word. Do you get what I'm saying? But see, you were brought up to walk in kingdom authority. Huh? Authority is given to you. He says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it's been power to tread over scorpions and serpents, over 
all the power of the enemy. You have that in you. You have that in you. The kingdom of God is within. Mark chapter 16, verse 16, 50, 16, verse 15. What does it say again, baby? He Go into all the world and teach. And, and preach. preach the and, gospel to every creature. Right. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Uh -huh. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be damned. Yeah. And these signs shall follow whoa, 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 whoa. them that believe. With signs following. Signs mm -hmm. following. Anytime you stand under authority, signs got to follow. Check this. In my name they shall cast out devils. Uh -huh. They shall speak with new tongues. Oh, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Okay. They shall take up serpents. Okay. And if they drink any deadly thing, it oh. shall not hurt Not them. on purpose. By accident. If the devil's trying to set you up for the kill, can't happen. It shall not hurt you. Shall not hurt you. And they shall lay hands on the sick and, and they shall recover. In the name of Jesus, I shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You have these giftings on the inside of you. So when we come back a little bit later on this week, probably on a Wednesday or Thursday with this, with part two of this, you're going to get the essence of what I'm saying. When I talk about a kingdom authority, this is the authority that you're walking in. This is the prerequisite. Do so you get what I'm saying? But you got to learn to walk in it. And I'm going to give you example. Me and Lisa going to give you example how to walk in this thing. Not just teach it. You need some hands-on experience. Okay? You need some hands-on and laying hands on the sick. You need some laying, you need some experience in speaking the word. You need some experience in the, how prophecy goes forth with authority. Do you get what I'm saying? You need to know about song. Did you know that you can prophesy in song? That you can stand in your authority in song? That songs are a weapon? That mm -hmm. praise and worship is a weapon? Did you know strongholds can be broken through singing? Yeah. It can be broken. Did you know that if, when you start speaking in tongues and you start speaking to fire God, because it said that in Hebrew chapter 12 that God is a consuming fire, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will flow right through you, the glory of God, and it will happen just like you say. You shall have whatsoever comes out of your mouth. Remember I kept telling you? For the rest of your life, after you know the Lord Jesus Christ, everything you confess out of your mouth is important. Everything. Comes from the heart, comes out of your mouth. You believe in your heart by faith, comes out of your mouth. You hear the word of God, you, it's in your heart, it comes out of your mouth. And it has to come alive. In other words, it has to be quickened. Every time you see quickened in the Bible, it means that the word of God is going to come alive. In somebody's life. Because you spoke it into existence. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what it means to walk in some of this kingdom authority. But I'm going to take two steps from here and get out of here. Underneath the screen, you will see the cash app. Dollar sign A-Train 1960. If you want to give, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down, shake it together, run on over. Shall men get back to you. Okay? This is to further the ministry radio station. My book's here. Um... To give to the poor. We got people here that are part in homeless situations, veterans that are out in the street. Okay? We need to help them. Okay? And that's what we're all about. Restore and unify. Lisa, you got something to say, baby? Um, no. We'll just stay tuned. No, I'm just looking up something different. It's a whole nother message. A whole nother message. No, we, 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 won't, we won't go there right now. I think <laughs> baby's going to begin part two. No. I think this so. has something to do with something else. I think baby's going to begin part two. I already see that spirit and that anointing. I know that anointing on my wifey. I know it. Right? See you guys later. We love you. Jesus loves you. So do we.